Hey everybody, today we're going to learn about equalization in your audio files, specifically low pass and high pass filters, and then a few other things about, about EQ. So let's start out with, with these filters. So right here, this is just a still image that I'm going to draw on for you later. But let's pull up a real filter here. Okay, so first of all, let's turn this off. I've got loaded up in here, I've got a just a drum track. We've got our our overhead mics, our snare, and our kick drum. Uh, and all of these are being sent to this drum bus, so I I have the filter on the bus so it, it'll apply the same effect to all all four of these drum tracks. Okay. So here's here's the audio without any filters on it. Okay. Now this particular uh, EQ effect is called a parametric equalizer, um, and what this means is you can control three different settings for each frequency. So you have your uh, your center frequency or target frequency. 40 hertz, 50 hertz, 200. You have your gain, so that will make it either louder or quieter. So let's say here at 50 hertz, if I bring the gain up, it's uh, now it's at you know 5 dB plus, or you can bring it down. Okay. Then below that you have the Q or the width. So this is referring to how steep these curves are. So a Q of two is pretty steep. Um, Let's also drag this over here. Uh, you can go Q of 1, see how the slopes are more gradual. We could go 8, it's more of a spike, like that. Okay, so parametric equalizers have all three of these values that you can adjust. Whereas some of the other equalizers, if we look here, your graphic equalizers, they only have the frequency and the gain. So I can do 500 hertz up or down, but I can't control the slope of, of what other frequencies those affect. Okay, so let's just delete this guy, go back to our parametric. All right, let's turn this, uh, how do I reset it? Default, okay. So this is again nothing on there. Let's try it with a low pass filter. Okay, so oh sorry, high pass filter. We'll try a high pass first. So what high pass means is that your high frequencies get a pass, so they get to go through the filter. So picture it it's like there's a bouncer outside the club and He's checking, checking the frequencies, like, oh, okay, so you are higher than 40 hertz. You get to go in the club. Okay, oh, you're lower than 40 hertz. Sorry, you got to stay outside. You can't come in. Okay, high pass. So I've turned that on right here. And then here I can control the frequency. See, I can slide that left or right. That's the target frequency. So anything below that frequency starts getting cut off. And then here I can adjust the gain. So this is how many dB in volume it's going to go down every octave. So the lower the number, the more gradual the slope. Or if I want it to go really steep, now it's going 48 dB down every time it's an octave. So if I set this at 100 hertz, an octave below 100 is 50 here. So by the time I get to 50, it is yep, negative 48 dB right there. Um, if I switch this to 12 dB, then by the time I get here to 50 hertz, it is at negative 12. Okay, so that's how how these work. Let's let's hear how it sounds. I'm just going to put this at a 20, 24, and bring this over to zero. So right now it's basically not doing anything. Let's just hit play, and you can hear it as it goes. I start sliding this over. <laughs> I didn't even have it turned on. Let's try that again. Now you'll probably hear a difference. Okay. Okay. So 
So you can see how it cuts out everything below wherever this is. All right, let's do the opposite now. I'll turn this off. So that was a high pass filter, meaning all the higher, all the frequencies higher than this, it lets into the club. The club being the mix of your <laughs> your audio. Okay, let's turn on a low pass. So this is the opposite. Uh, only the low frequencies get to join the club. Okay, it's, oops, that's a different one. What did I do? Let's just reset this. Okay, turn on the low pass. Let's turn off this one so I don't get it confused. Okay, I'm going to hit play. Okay, there we go. There's your low pass and high pass filters. So, you, uh, for your homework, you're going to want to be able to draw one of these on your own. So, I'll, I'll give you some printouts of just a blank one of these so you'll know where the frequencies are and the gains. But you'll want to be able to draw the equivalent of this. So, let's say you have a high pass filter at 3 kilohertz with a... Um, with a gain of 24 dB. So it would look something like that. So at 3 kilohertz it would start to go down and then by the first octave it will have gone down 24 dB so there we are at 6. Okay, So you've got a, a slope, basically 45 degree angle there. Um, or if we had a, lo a high pass filter at let's say 500 hertz what would that look like? Let's turn that off. So it would look something like this. So just so you know how to do it, I'm going to show you how to draw one of these. Let's go over here. So here's my, my still image. I'll just draw it right on top of that. Where are, there we go. Okay, so if I wanted a low pass filter at, let's say, 4 kilohertz. So where's our 4 kilohertz? Right here. And I want a low pass filter to start there, meaning anything that's lower than that gets to join the club. Okay, so let's say usually it starts right at it. Okay, something like that. So 4 kilohertz and what would our gain be here? What's double 4 kilohertz? 8. So at 8 I'm looking at about minus 20 of gain per octave. Okay, so if I wanted minus 48 per octave, then I would have to draw it going more steep like that. Okay, there's one octave and now it's gone down 48. So depending what your gain is, that's how steep you want the line to be. Okay, how about a high pass filter at 50 hertz? So remember, high pass means all of the high frequencies get to go through, like that. So where's 50 hertz on here? There it is. So I'll go over here, and at 50 hertz, that's when I start start drawing that down. And then, again, I need to pay attention to my gain here. So in this case, the gain, well, what's, what's half of 50? 25. So right about there would be 25. Yeah, maybe it's halfway in between. Okay, so at one octave it is about minus 15, 16. Okay, so if we wanted at minus 24, let's erase this thing. At minus 24, that means I'd want it to be right about here, the slope. And it goes down like that. Okay, so that is our high pass filter, and this one is our low pass filter. All the low frequencies get through here, all the high frequencies get through here. Now, notice when you put both of these together, you will have 
uh, what's called a band pass filter, meaning everything between the two gets through. If you have both a high pass and a low pass. Um, so let's say, there, let's just erase all this. So let's say I wanted to have a um, something that sounded like I'm talking on the telephone. Well, the telephone frequencies are 1 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz. Okay, so where are we here? Right there to right there. So if I have a high pass filter at 1K, like that, and then a low pass filter at 4K, now everything down here is going to start getting cut out, and everything down here start getting cut out, and it'll sound like it's a telephone. Should we try it? Let's go over here. So let's set our our high pass at 1,000 hertz, and let's set our low pass at 4,000 hertz. Let's hear this. So here's without the filter. And here's with it on. There you go. That's what these drums would sound like going through a telephone. Okay. Um, I think that will do it for our our filters. Just to, just to show you what a few other weird things you can do with these. Um, so this is Adobe Audition that I'm using. Uh, there's this thing called an FFT filter. I'm not sure what that stands for, but um, basically it lets you draw your own graph on here. So it starts out flat at zero. So if I wanted to, wherever I click, it's going to add a point on there. So I can drag the highs down. I could bring that part up. I could, I can do all kinds of crazy stuff here. Let's hit play on this. So I'm moving that around. Bring the bass up. Bring that down. This is just the high frequencies. Okay, so that one you can draw your own. Um, this other thing was really weird, notch filter. Okay, so notch filters are used, um, these are more, it's called a surgical filter, so if there's like a specific frequency that you want to get rid of. Um, notice the uh, notch width narrow. Oh, we need to talk about Q and that. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Um, so all of these are really narrow. So if you like have, uh, a lot of times they'll use it to get rid of S's, sibilant softener. So this is when, uh, you know, you have a vocalist and they have the s, s, the S sound a lot. You can put this frequent this filter on there to get rid of that that harsh S sound. Um, but I noticed some crazy stuff in here. C major chord. Did you know that just by playing the drums you can make a C major chord? I wouldn't have thought so, but by boosting these specific frequencies, so here's without it. Now I turn it on. It's boosting all the frequencies that would make up a C major chord. <laughs> or what about a E minor? There's no other instrument going, it's just the drums, but just by boosting <laughs> those frequencies it makes this that chord. Or I really like this one. Weaponized dissonance. Yeah. Sorry about that. You'll wanna should have warned you to turn your headphones down first. Okay. So that'll do it for this tutorial. In the next one we'll talk about uh, how to cal calculate the Q 
the Q factor of a of an EQ. So until then.